Welcome to our Wednesday devotion. I'm Pastor Tim Gerbing from Christ Lutheran Church in Pewaukee, Aaron, and Wauwatosa, Wisconsin. Bad blood between family members is often more hate-filled and violent than with people who are not related. You know, we even see examples of that in Scripture. Such was the case with two sons, Esau and Jacob. Esau was the older of the two and the favorite of their father Isaac, but their mother Rebekah clearly loved Jacob more. God revealed to Rebekah before her boys were born that he wanted the birthright to be given to Jacob, not to the older brother, as was a custom. When Isaac, in his old age, felt that the time was right to officially announce that birthright, he was determined to give it to his favorite, to Esau. When Rebecca found out about that, she and Jacob quickly hatched a scheme to deceive the now blind Isaac. And unknowingly, Isaac gave the birthright to Jacob. Esau was enraged. He was determined to murder his brother. And so Jacob fled to another country and over time, Jacob lived through some hardship. He was deceived several times himself, and he became a more repentant and mature man. God blessed Jacob with a large family with uh, 12 sons, one daughter, great wealth and livestock. Eventually, Jacob decided it was time to return to Canaan, his home, since That was where God's future nation, the descendants of Jacob's 12 sons, would live as the nation of Israel. But Jacob was terrified. He was certain that Isaac, who also had become wealthy and powerful, would still try to kill him. And so Jacob divided up his herds and his large family in such a way that if he were attacked, perhaps some of them might be able to to escape with their lives. And then we read this. It's from Genesis chapter 33, verses 1 to 4. Jacob looked up, and there was Esau coming with his 400 men. So he divided the children among Leah, Rachel, and the two female servants. He put the female servants and their children in front, Leah and her children next, and Rachel and Joseph in the rear. He himself went on ahead and bowed down to the ground seven times as he approached his brother. But Esau ran to meet Jacob and embraced him. He threw his arms around his neck and kissed him, and they wept. Oh, who who would have guessed that things would turn out that way? Sometimes, like Jacob, we become so focused on our problems that whatever they may be, they become an insurmountable obstacle in our lives. They fill us with dread, fear, anxiety, and worse. I once read that when Michael J. Fox was originally diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, he was overcome by it. He was certain that he would suffer the worst symptoms that the disease could cause. One day, his Mother told him that whatever the worst case scenario is that we conjure up in our minds, it almost never happens. And it gave him hope. We have something greater than that advice. The absolute worst case scenario for every human being is the same, to have to stand before a holy God, give an account of our sins, and then suffer God's just punishment of eternal death and hell. But Jesus took that scenario away. For the believer, no matter the sin, death and hell are removed forever through Christ. His resurrection to life eternal proves it. And if we remember that, it will put all of our problems in proper perspective. There is nothing that we need fear with a Savior like ours. Amen.